we need to keep things simple, all right? When it comes to reading your Bible, keep it simple. Jesus was born in Nazareth, or whatever, Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, and was not raised in, uh, in Greece or in one of these more sophisticated areas, right? He was raised out in the boonies. He communicated his message to very simple, kind of lower middle class people in his environment. It's like if you're from Spokane, it's like he was, you know, born in uh, Hilliard and raised a few blocks away. <laughs> That's what it would be like. Um, and then not, not only that, but took those people that were from Hilliard and a few blocks away and turned them into the 12 apostles that changed the world. He kept it simple. He used very simple language. He used very simple stories. He talked a lot about seeds in the earth, plowing, gardening, vineyards, branches. You know, he, he used a terminology that hit them where they lived because they were fishermen. They were farmers. They were ranchers, you know. Um, it's not that complicated. It's so frustrating so frustrating to to listen to these people who talk about um, Greek definitions of words and cross-referencing you know a thousand scriptures to make one little point um, it's been a long day Some thoughts going to my head uh, it's really simple you guys it's it's just common stories with common everyday people it's not until after his death burial and resurrection that he started to he brought paul in and paul was a student of gamelia you know uh gamelia was like one of the great teachers i can't remember who he studied under but there was another um scribe that was around the previous generation that he kind of took over you know that throne um of respect Gamelia. um i can't remember his teacher's name but it was before christ was born anyway um so you know he was a student of his he was a pharisee he was a tribe of benjamin you know um he was well versed in the world in the greek the law of moses the philosophy i mean this is where god just i think you know god just said i'm gonna use that guy paul <laughs> I need a smart dude. You know, I need a really, really smart guy. Someone who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with political leaders. Someone who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the religious leaders and own them. He stood before Festus. Fest, Festus? Yeah. King Festus, I think was his name. In Acts, you know. Um, that's when he kicked it into a little bit more of a kind of an intellectual gear. But that was, you know, in, in my opinion, that was just God's way of setting the record straight on so many things because he had somebody in this world at that time, in that place, that could fully grasp what had happened. What had happened with the fulfilled prophecies, what grace was, what the church is, um, you know, what the flesh is, what the spirit is. All of those doctrines come from Paul. You know, um, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but after the spirit. You know, he gets all, all into, you know, there's n none righteous, no, not one for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. I mean, Paul went off. But still, even in Paul's incredibly deep uh, mind, he still found a way to keep things simple. You know, and when you read his epistles, you know, you will see that they're very relatable, even though he was super intelligent. So when we when we see, you know, Bible scholars, and I, I, I shouldn't scoff at them because I kind of, I respect them, but then again, I scoff at them because so many of them are like the uh, Pharisees who, you know, they held the kingdom to, uh, the, the keys to the kingdom of heaven and wouldn't go in. Not only that, they wouldn't let anyone else go in either, right? So 
I think a lot of people are like that. You know, they, they just come at it from this um, attitude like you have to know so much in order to truly understand, you know. Oh, you have to study the Greek and you have to, you know, and that's all good. I'm not saying that's not bad, but, you know, the word of God is something, it's like a gradual um, beach. It just goes deeper and deeper. You can just walk, you can wade into a thin, thin line of water on the beach and then walk out into deeper waters and you can study and get out deeper into those waters. But that's only the riches of Christ. We start with basic, simple things like faith, you know, simple things like understanding. Paul was very clear, you know, in contrast with someone like Joel Osteen, who gets up and says, live your best life now. God is a miracle for you. And God is this. And oh, you know, blah, blah. Good, 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 good. You're everything's rosy. That is not what Paul taught. Paul you know, was beaten, he was imprisoned, he was, you know, ridiculed and eventually killed. Um, maybe he should have had, <laughs> maybe he should have read Joel Osteen's book, Your Best Life Now. <laughs> See, it's ridiculous. But they taught, you know, count it all joy when you fall into different types of things, you know. Um, that that which doesn't hurt us is going to make us stronger. We are never in scripture promised some rosy life. We just are not promised a rosy, uh, a rosy life. We're not going to live one. We're going to have times, good times. We're going to have bad times. Some of us are going to have more good times. Some of us are going to have more bad times. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, the rich and the poor, that's always been like class warfare. But, you know, I've known a lot of rich people who were miserable, just absolutely miserable. Their problems didn't revolve around money. They were deeper, you know, um, not fine, not being fulfilled on the inside. Um, you know, when you don't have money, your problems are money, <laughs> paying the bills, getting by. Those are your problems. And those are, that's a pain. You know, that's a big problem. Poverty and being poor is a problem. Uh, but money won't fix your problem. And for rich people, um, they suffer too in their own way, in their own mind. You know, they're prisoners in their own mind. It's because the flesh can never be satisfied. And the more money you have and the more you're able to feed that flesh, the flesh will soon get bored, you know, and the flesh will want even more and and it just leads to more suffering um and you know the bible teaches these types of things so anyway um it's one of matt's rants just you know ranting on about how the bible can be very simple you don't have to complicate it you don't have to add to it just read it be honest with yourself be honest with what you're reading and apply it to your life the best way you possibly can.